Okay, we're going to start the proof of the theorem that I stated a little while ago, which said that if G is a topologically closed group of matrices, and if we define little g to be the set of matrices X such that X T X is in big G for all T, then little g has some nice properties. So little g is a vector space, it's a subspace of little g L N R. If X and Y are matrices in little g, then their Lie bracket or the commutator bracket X Y is also in G. Little g is the tangent space to the group big G at the identity. And the exponential map from little g to big G is locally invertible. So number three, we've already proved. We proved that in the last video. Number four is going to take a little while to prove, so we'll postpone the proof of that to the next video. And in this video, we're going to focus on one and two. And we're going to use three, which is the theorem I proved last time, stated in this form. So what does it say? If um, gamma of s is a path in g that passes through the identity at time s equals zero, then its derivative d gamma by ds at zero is in little g. We're going to use this, which was basically a version of point three in the statement. Okay, how are we going to prove this? How do you prove something's a vector space? You need to show that if x and y are in little g, then x plus y is also in little g. And you also need to show that if lambda is a real number, then lambda x is in little g, right? That's saying vectors can be added and can be rescaled. And the final thing we need to prove is that also uh, x bracket y is in little g, if x and y are in little g. So in each case, we need to produce an element of little g. And the theorem we proved last time says, to do that, it's enough to produce a path. So we need to produce a path gamma one of S, which is inside the Lie group G. Gamma one at zero should be the identity. And D gamma one by D S at zero should be X plus Y. And then we can apply this theorem we proved last time to say x plus y is in little g. Similarly, we need a gamma 2 such that all this stuff is true. And d gamma 2 by ds at s equals 0 equals lambda x. And finally, we need to produce a gamma 3 uh, such that all this stuff is true. And d gamma 3 by ds at s equals 0 equals the Lie bracket, or the commutator bracket of x and y. So that's what we've got to do. Same strategy of proof for all the different parts of the theorem. So here we go. We know that X and Y are in little g, so we have paths X S X, whose derivative at S equals zero is just X, and X S Y, whose derivative at S equals zero is just Y. Uh, so let's take gamma one to be the product of those two guys. So each of them lies inside G by definition of little g. Right, little g is a set of matrices X such that X T X is in G for all T. So this is in G for all S and this is in G for all S and their product is in G for all S because G is a group. You multiply things, it stays in the group. At time zero, I get x of zero times x of zero, that's the identity. This is good. And the derivative of this can be computed using the product rule. So d gamma one by ds, if I differentiate the first term, I bring down a factor of x. So I get x s uh, x, x s x. I should really pick different letters, these are impossible to say out loud. And then x s y. And then I differentiate the second term, so I get exp s x y exp s y. And then if I set s equal to zero, I get d gamma one by ds at s equals zero equal to x times the identity plus y. Right, all the x terms go to the identity because I'm setting s equal to zero. And if I look up, that's what I wanted, right? I'm now producing a path whose derivative at zero is x plus y. 
So the theorem tells me x plus y is in little g. Next one is gamma 2. I need to produce something whose tangent vector is lambda x. So I'm just going to start off with x of s lambda x. Because then if I differentiate that, I know that I bring down a factor of lambda x. And I get um, lambda x x s x. And when I set, uh, sorry, x lambda x. And when I set s equal to zero, I just get lambda x. Okay, so that is the second path that I need. Uh, the third one is tricky. So I need to find a path <coughs> whose derivative is x bracket y. So with the other ones, I was looking for exponentials with the thing that I wanted somehow there in the exponent, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna remember that the Baker-Campbell Hausdorff formula has uh, a term like x bracket y in it. So I'll just tell you what I'm gonna do and then we'll see if it makes any sense. So I'm gonna take gamma three of s to be exp um, x square root s times exp y square root s times exp minus x square root s times exp minus y square root s. Okay, that looks a bit weird. There's a lot of square roots and random stuff in there, but you can kind of see there's x, y, and minus x and minus y, so you might hope you get something like the commutator bracket when you multiply this whole thing out. Let's see. Applying a baking apple house door formula to this first product, I get x of x root s plus y root s plus a half root s times root s s x bracket y plus stuff of order s to the three halves or more. Similarly, if I multiply out these second two using the baker campbell hausdorff formula, I get x of minus x root s minus y root s, but then plus, because I get two minus signs multiplying together, so plus a half s x bracket y, again, plus higher order stuff. And now I'm gonna use the baker campbell hausdorff formula again to multiply these two guys out. So I get x of, who x plus y times root s plus minus x plus y root s. So they all cancel. So these two terms, when I, when I add, right, so maybe I should say this. First thing I do is I add the two exponents. So I get x root s plus y root s minus x root s minus y root s. That's what I was trying to say, that all cancels. And this is why the signs have been picked the way they've been picked to make sure that cancels. The next term will be a half s bracket x and y plus a half s x bracket y. So when I add those up, I just get x, uh, sorry, s x bracket y plus higher order terms. And then I get terms by taking the bracket um, of this with this, etc. So what do I get from that? Well, I get uh, root s times root s times a minus sign, so minus s times x plus y, sorry, x plus y, bracket x plus y, plus higher order terms. So everything else is order at least s to the three halves, you can check. And again, this term here goes away because x plus y commutes with itself. So x plus y bracket x plus y is zero. Scroll down a bit. So that's good news because what have I got? I've got x s x bracket y plus higher order terms. So if I differentiate this with respect to s and set s equals zero, I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I might as well differentiate what's inside and stick it outside. So I'll get 
x bracket y plus stuff of order square root s times this exponential of s x bracket y plus higher order stuff in s. And when I set s equal to zero, of course, all the big O terms go away and actually this s goes away as well. So I'm just left with the bracket x bracket y. Okay, sorry, this is uh, gamma three, not gamma two. Right, now you might be worried about this because this is supposed to be a differentiable function, right? I've just taken its derivative. And you might be worried that square root s is not a differentiable function at the origin, right? If I differentiate root s at s equals zero, the derivative is like one over root s, and then that blows up and goes to infinity at s equals zero. But because of the way I've multiplied these terms together, all the things with a square root s in them disappear. I'm left with an s and things of sort of s to the three halves, and s to the three halves is differentiable, right? When I differentiate it, I get sort of three halves uh, s to the half, and when I set s equal to zero, that's that's fine, that's differentiable. It's not infinitely differentiable, but that doesn't matter. So with this particular choice, although the thing I started off with had a lot of square root s's, you shouldn't worry because by the time I got to the end of this manipulation, you could see it was a once continuously differentiable path. And that's all we need. Okay, so this proves the theorem. If you go back and look, I've produced three paths, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, whose derivative at s equals zero is x plus y, lambda x, and x bracket y for any x and y and lambdas uh, in the Lie algebra or in the reals. And that tells me that I can add elements to the Lie algebra and get another element to the Lie algebra by this theorem, which I should probably highlight, put a big box around it. I can rescale elements of the Lie algebra and I get another element of the Lie algebra. I can take the brackets and I get another element of the Lie algebra. So it is a Lie algebra. That's the punchline. Little g is a Lie subalgebra of little gLnR.